In this video, we take a look at the features of a problem that can be solved using computational methods. So before we get into what makes a problem solvable with computational methods, let's consider the question, is every problem computable if we have an appropriate algorithm? So a problem is considered in general computable if an algorithm exists to solve it. And in 1920, David Hilbert proposed that any problem defined properly could be solved by writing an appropriate algorithm. When he produced the halting problem in 1936, Alan Turing proved that there are problems that exist that are not computable. In other words, the halting problem confirmed that some problems cannot be solved by computers. It dispelled the belief held until this point that the only limits on algorithms were existing hardware, memory size and processor speed. If you want to know more about the halting problem, see the going beyond the specification section at the end of this video. If we just take the subset of problems that are considered computable, both hardware and exponential complexity can impose limits on algorithms, even if the problem is technically solvable. A particular problem may simply require more memory than is feasible, rendering it effectively unsolvable. In a similar way, a problem could have an exponential complexity, meaning that problems require an exponential amount of work to be done. In this situation, throwing faster or more processes at the situation will make little difference. The blue arrow here shows that just because we're doubling the number of processing hardware, the actual improvements is negligible. So as computer scientists, we're only really interested in algorithms that can solve problems in a reasonable amount of time and using a reasonable amount of memory. So this is where the concept of tractable versus intractable problems comes into play. A tractable problem is any problem that can be solved in polynomial time or better. In other words, the algorithm to solve the problem will run quickly enough to be practical and useful. An intractable problem, on the other hand, is any problem that cannot be solved in polynomial time or better. Now, that doesn't mean it can't be solved by an algorithm, but as soon as the input side increases to anything other than a very small data set, a computer can't solve it within a reasonable time frame. Using heuristic methods, many intractable problems can be solved by sacrificing the optimal solution for one that's good enough. And that's something we're going to look at in later videos. Now we're going a little beyond the spec here. You don't actually need to know the terms tractable and intractable for the exam, but we will be discussing algorithm efficiency in the later videos. And words here such as exponential time, polynomial, linear and logarithmic time will all be explained. So tractable problems, problems that are considered to be computable, have many features that make them great candidates for being solved using a variety of different computational methods. A few of them are enumeration, theoretical approaches, abstraction, decomposition, simulation and automation. So abstraction and decomposition, well, applying techniques like abstraction and decomposition to simplify the complexity of a problem and break it down makes it far easier to write an algorithm to solve the problem. And we've gone through those in quite a bit more detail in other videos. Enumeration. So many problems, especially puzzles, can be solved using a method known as enumeration. This effectively involves designing an algorithm that performs an exhaustive search and attempts all possible solutions until the correct one is found. Theoretical approaches. So if a problem can be boiled down to pure theory, it becomes easy to represent using mathematic equations. Of course, computers are great at maths, so these kind of problems are great candidates for being solved by an algorithm. 
Simulation and automation. So simulation is the process of designing a model of a real system in an attempt to understand its behavior. And in computer science, automation is about building a problem solving model and putting it into action. Both te these techniques tend to make heavy use of abstraction and are ways of turning complex problems into ones that can more easily be solved by algorithms. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What do we mean by computational methods? And can you describe a range of computational methods? So that's everything you need to know from the specification. If you want to learn a little more about Turing's halting problem, then watch the rest of this video. So in the 1930s, Alan Turing wanted to prove whether the belief that every single problem could be solved by a computer was true or not. That is why he came up with the halting problem, which posed the question, is it possible, in general, to write a program that can tell given a description of another program in its inputs and without executing this program, whether the given program with its given inputs will halt. We can visualize the halting problem using this diagram, which can effectively be read as follows. Can we write a procedure, let's call it halting problem decider, which should accept as inputs two parameters? The first is a description of an arbitrary program, we can call that P, and the second is the program's inputs, we'll call that X. And without executing the inputted program, determine whether it will halt or run forever. Now the answer is no. And in 1936, Turing proved that a machine for solving the halting problem did not, and more importantly, could not exist. His work dispelled the belief that the only limits on algorithms were existing hardware. Essentially, the halting problem proves that some problems simply cannot be solved by computers. Now, if we look at the two pseudocode programs on the left here, you can see it'd be trivial to figure out if either of those programs will run forever or halt at some point. However, more complex programs can be problematic. Now, one approach could be to run the program for X number of steps or iterations and check to see if it halts. However, even if the program doesn't halt after X steps, that doesn't confirm whether the program will run forever or will eventually halt. Turing's work proved that any algorithm that tries to figure out whether a program will halt or run forever can be made to contradict itself, so therefore cannot be correct. Since the halting problem, many others have also been proved to be impossible to solve by an algorithm. You might like to look up the famous Wang tile problem.